It is the weekend before the season kicks off in the EFL. That can mean only one thing. The terror, the stress, the potential embarrassment of the opinions that will get repeated back to me all season long. It is time for our pre-season 1-24 to predictions. We are going to do League 1 today. We're going to do the Championship tomorrow. You can broadly have your say immediately uh, over on the Community tab. You can click that right now and the video will still keep playing. Uh, go and have a vote. Will your EFL team finish top 6, 7-12, to 13-18, to 18, bottom 6? We're going to measure confidence levels going into this, but have your say in the comments. Remember, mentioning one team is a little bit pointless. We need a league table. We need at least the top three, a bottom four maybe. Uh, get in there in the comments. The more detail you give me, the more of my respect you get. And there are more teams involved in this than merely the one you support. With that being said, let's get into this. And we start these every season by saying... If you're going to be brave enough to put your neck on the line and do a 1-24, to you have to have some teams going down. And in League One, you have to have four of them. And just preempting any tears in the comments, I hope none of these teams go down. I hope no one gets relegated out of the 92 teams in the English Football League. But 13 teams are going to. That's the deal. And if you're going to keep watching... You're going to see me predict four of them. The first of those is Crawley. And this is just purely on where they've come from. They couldn't have been lower the last two seasons, Crawley. They just survived in 22nd in League Two and got promoted magically in seventh place in the playoffs. So in terms of calibre, they are by far the lowest League One team this season. I hope they keep going and I hope Scott Lindsay continues his amazing managerial performance but fairly simplistically for those reasons I've got Crawley right at the bottom and I've got Burton in 23rd I think this is when the levy breaks is 15th 16th 20th I always felt Dino Mumria was a little bit crash bang wallop you know lots of um, lots of high data in terms of balls going into the box lots of transfers in lots of transfers out it only lasts a little while working that way doesn't it Mark Robinson's in and I've got things just trending down into the relegation zone for Burton this season. Shrewsbury, 22nd. Similar sort of thing. Paul Hurst is back. He's been back off to Grimsby as well. I had a little look at um, Shrewsbury's kind of history. Nine years now in League One. And that big spike that took Paul Hurst to Ipswich in third. Otherwise, six times in the bottom seven in those nine years. Will they have... Enough to stay up this season. I am saying not. And they will be down in 22nd. And in the most brutal position in English football, I, I would say. Let me know if you agree on that in the comments. 21st in League One, where four teams get relegated. Yes, Nigel Clough is massively experienced. But with the brutality of four going down... The way that Mansfield got promoted, it took them a while to do it, didn't it? They've been up there challenging for two or three seasons and not quite getting over the line. They've done it this season. But I can see a drop straight back down into League Two for Mansfield. There you go. That's out the way then. My four to go down and my just to survive. Oof. Stevenage. And this is my... Um, kind of idea, my mantra on the channel that a sharp rise is often followed by a sharp fall, especially when you have a cult of personality manager like Steve Evans who has left the club and gone to Rotherham. So Stevenage, bottom of League Two, top of League One, nearly in the playoffs in League One. I think it's drop-off time, but not the fatal drop-off that we saw at the likes of, um, sort of Barnsley in the in the championship where they went from playoffs straight to relegation. I think they will just survive under Alex Ravel. And in 19th, I've got Bristol Rovers. Initial bounce um, under Matt Taylor. I think he was manager of the month as well. And then I kept freezing the league table every month. And it just kept going 19th, 19th, 19th for me. So um, I've got Bristol Rovers stagnating a little bit. 
And they're going to be safe, but I've got them in 19th place for that reason. In 18th place, I've got Cambridge, which I think is right where they were last season. But I'm very fascinated, this idea. We don't see this very often in football. Gary Monk, this manager who was in the Premier League very young, who's actually gone and taken a break and come back in in League One at a fairly sort of localish club for him. Can he get it going again in terms of his career? If he does with Cambridge, they'll move up the table. I think it's going to be hard based on kind of size, stature, expectation um, just down the road from me here at Cambridge. But um, I'm very interested to watch the progress of Mr. Monk there. Cambridge holding in 18th. In 17th, down three, I've got Northampton. Now, can I level with you? I did a draft of this and I had them a few places lower. And then I looked at the points last season and I made a last minute change because not only were they safe, they were miles clear, weren't they? So I, I just feel it'd be a bit disrespectful to have Northampton dropping massively, massively lower than they were last season. But I do think there's going to be a little kind of regression to the mean after, you know, that that nice bump up and momentum after you've just been promoted um, and, you know, you're sort of riding out that wave there. Um, moving on in to 16th, I've got Exeter. And again, it's down three. And I've just got this idea with League One that there's um, it's going to be fearsome at the top with some of the relegated championship teams and also a couple of the promoted League Two teams. You can imagine, um, well, you'll find out where I've got those two. But I feel the mid-table might drop off a little bit. Um, Exeter, they were trending up for the longest time under Matt Taylor, who we mentioned um, as the Bristol Rovers manager. Um, I've got them dropping down three under Gary Caldwell this season into 16th, though. And in 15th, um, Reading, I mean, if you base it on the last couple of decades and size and stature expectation, you'd have them working their way up League One. It's just hard to predict anything massively positive under this current ownership. They just needed to get through last season, and they did. So I've got them up too. And look, there's some argument if, they, if they're going to climb, they might climb big style. I just find it hard to say anything massively confident until that ownership is out of Reading Football Club. In 14th, I've got Leighton Orient. I've got them down three as well. There's a bit of a pattern here, isn't it? Um, feels a bit tough because I did my... Um, end of season kind of review, which is always um, a good view of how the next season's possibly going to start. And Orient finished the season well, didn't they? And Richie Wellens has been absolutely magnificent. Maybe this constant climbing all the way up from the bottom of League Two and, you know, uh, 11th and top half of League One is just going to um, plateau a little bit. But I think long term, he could still keep them moving um, up the pyramid. So I've got Orin in 14th with a big shout out to Richie Wellens there. Wickham, 13th. This is kind of based on the idea that Wickham have been on a historic spike under Gareth Ainsworth over a, a very long period and obviously got into the championship and constantly punching in terms of the playoffs really in League One. I've got them under Matt Bloomfield here dropping out of the top half of League One for the first time in six years. Bit of natural kind of um, gravitational pull down there at Adams Park. So I've got Wickham just outside the top half. And before we get to the top half, have a look over there at my wonderful Beer 52 display. By the way, can you see that little golden ticket there I'm pointing right at? We're going to give that away at some point. That is a completely free case of Beer 52 that we'll give away to one of our channel watchers here. But in the meantime, you can get your mitts on that case of beer there. Oh, actually, I should say, that's a 16 case. You can get your mitts on an 8 case of Beer 52, either craft beer or dark beer, for free. But you do have to cover the postage, which is £5.95. You can claim... That wonderful deal by heading over to the Beer 52 website, www.beer5252.com slash bloom. Free case of beer. If you pay the postage, 5 95 please drink responsibly. www.beer52.com slash bloom into the top half. And there is one of those powerful League Two teams coming straight into the top half of League One in my humble 
opinion. And Stockport, we know Stockport have money. And we know Dave Challoner has been promoted about 500 times and in the kind of National League and now out of League Two as well in the main pyramid. Um, I don't see Stockport kind of flying straight up into the playoff positions like maybe some people do, but I've got them going into the top half and the climb continuing um, and that making it hard for the mid-table established teams already in League One. Into 11th, I've got Wigan. I'm struggling to process Wigan here. I put Sean Maloney, um, well, you can find out where I put him in my League One manager rankings and a few Wigan fans are saying, Ben, oh, come on. Get him up higher. He's done a fantastic job. He'll have Wigan challenging. Um, traditionally, in League One, uh, Wigan are a powerhouse, aren't they? But I've only got them going up one position. I just think it's going to be a bit too competitive above them. But we'll see. Wigan often prove me wrong when it comes to League One. Plus one into 11 for Wigan. And Blackpool in 10th. Has Critchley still got the magic? Um you tell me, absolutely incredible couple of seasons to win the playoffs. And then, where were they? Like 16th in the championship? Um, I don't know. If he has, they're going to be higher than 10th. But I've got them kind of levelling out there. I think that's down two from last season. In ninth, Barnsley, um, which would see this as a bit of a trend down wouldn't it, uh, since they, well, we already mentioned earlier in the video, fifth in the championship, relegated to League One and back-to-back -back playoff defeats for Barnsley in League One. And I've got them dropping out and into ninth just because of the chaos at the end of last season. Actually sacked the manager just before the playoffs, Collins, didn't they? Daryl Clark, that feels like, and... Um, Full respect to Daryl Clark. That feels like a good gig for him. It's higher than he's managed um, before. Let's see how he does with Barnsley. I've got them finishing in ninth. And in eighth, I've got Lincoln. Now, there'll be a lot of... Um, I think there'll be a lot of predictions for Lincoln to get in the playoffs, I have to say, because they finished last season pretty strongly. What do my notes say? Fourth from Christmas Day onwards. Very, very impressive. I feel, like I said about Wigan, though, it's going to be too competitive up ahead of Lincoln. So I've got them in eighth. Where were they? Were they seventh last season? Sorry, I can't quite remember where they were last season, but they were very close, weren't they? Um, good luck, Lincoln. Can they replicate that Michael Appleton playoff final finish there with um, Brennan Johnson and Morgan Rogers in that team? And there they are. Wrexham. Hollywood Wrexham. Mr. Deadpool. And Mr. Iron from Mythic Quest, they get all the headlines. Um, I've got them climbing right up the leagues again. I know there's going to be a lot of money go on them for promotion this season. I'm not seeing it. And I wonder whether, if they don't get promoted this season, whether Phil Parkinson may be upgraded in the brutality of these teams that have got loads of money and climbing up the divisions. You tell me. In the chat, I think they're going to make a big splash, but I don't think Wrexham are going to be in the top six, despite probably the tons of money currently being bet on them to do so. And here come our top six. Now, remember, the playoffs have been locked out by, well, we already mentioned Barnsley, and there's another two teams that have been in the playoffs for two seasons running. And we're not mentioning either of those yet because we've gone for Charlton, in sixth. And can I be completely honest with you? This is purely a Nathan Jones pick here. I still believe that Nathan Jones is a really good football manager. I know he um, he kind of divides opinion. And sometimes I think that's more about the, the um, security of the person given the opinion because he's a bit a bit kind of bolshy and, a, you know, may have a bit of the old small man syndrome. But he's a damn good football manager, in my opinion, obviously for his work at Luton, not at Stoke. Or Southampton. And just one number is jumping out at me. Played 16. Lost only two. Yes, he drew loads of games. But immediately went in there and got Charlton hard to beat. And I think they're going to be up there. If they'd kept Alfie May. I think I might have even had them. A couple of places higher than that. Charlton in sixth. And there is one of the teams who have been in the playoffs the past couple 
of seasons. I've got Peterborough up there again. And yes, I do understand Edwards out, Burrows out for big money. But this is what Peterborough do. They build stars at League One level. They sell them. They get great transfer fees and they bring in a load more. And Darren Ferguson knows this league better than anyone. He knows his way to promotion better than anyone. I've got them in fifth. God knows what will happen in the playoffs. Um, but Peterborough in fifth, and if they were to finish fifth in the playoffs, they would play Bolton Wanderers. Now, I went all in on Bolton. I'm pretty sure I had them automatic. Someone fact check me on that in the comments last season. I've really liked what Ian Everett has done, taking them out of League Two into League One and challenging. I hate the term. I absolutely hate the term. Bottled it. But Bolton bottled it last season, didn't they? And I wonder that missed opportunity, 87 points, and they lost to Oxford in the final of the playoffs and didn't, didn't turn up at all, did they? A team that only scored 77 points. I wonder, is the momentum and a little bit of the bloom off the rose was last time, last time, the time for Ian Everett and Bolton. So I've got them dropping down a place into fourth and having a very familiar Playoff look and a game with Peterborough. In third, Rotherham. Steve Evans plus Rotherham in League One. Let's be honest, we laugh and joke about Rotherham existing in two positions. Either kind of bottom of um, championship or top of League One. I've not got them getting automatic promotion like they always tend to do or tended to do under Paul Warren. It's going to be great fun, though, with Steve Evans at... I mean, he pushed the envelope at Stevenage and had them close. But whatever you say about Rotherham at championship level, <laughs> they are bloody powerful at League One level. I've got them finishing third. And imagine that touchline, Steve Evans and Nathan Jones in a playoff semi-final. Forget the playoffs, though, because going up automatically, ladies and gentlemen, I have got Huddersfield Town bouncing straight back after a bit of a pathetic relegation last season, starting with Neil Warnock, going to Darren Moore, ending with Andre brighton Writer. Obviously, I was at their last game when Ipswich got promoted and Huddersfield um, bowed out of the championship. And if my sixth place Charlton was a Nathan Jones pick, this is a Mike Duff redemption pick. He was so unlucky as Barnsley manager a couple of seasons ago in League One. A, to come up against um, Plymouth 101, Ipswich 99, Sheffield Wednesday 96, was it? In that particular season. And then, my God, that playoff campaign. Um, red card in the final, you tell me, was that a red card? And then took them all the way to the 123rd minute. And just before penalty, Sheffield Wednesday scored to nick the win. Mike Duff, okay. He cut and run, didn't he? Went to Swansea, didn't work out. I think he's back in League One. I think he knows what he's doing here. I think he's got a point to prove. Huddersfield have sold Jack Rodoni, spent a little bit of that cash. I think they might still be able to do a little bit more. Kevin Nagel, the owner, has got a lot to prove as well. Um, and I'm forgetting the name of the young fullback who really impressed me, the, um, the youngster as well when I watched Huddersfield. I think there's something there under Mike Duff. And if there's any justice in the world after his last go at League One, he's going to make it over the line without having to go in the playoffs. And can you guess first place? I've literally written down on my notes, no explanation. Is there any, any more solid pick this season that everybody is going to have than Birmingham to win League One? And... I don't want to pile the pressure on Blues, but it's starting to feel like, given the spending that's happened, and okay, it doesn't guarantee anything, does it? You know, just having the most money and the best players. Sometimes people mess it up, but this feels like, this feels like Jack Walker at Blackburn and Abramovich at Chelsea and um, uh, Man City, Sheikh Mansour. Relative to the level, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, all those teams won the won the title, didn't they? But I'm saying at League One level, what Birmingham are doing feels like this season, next season, that they're just going to 
Kate Walkett, aren't they? And you almost get to the point where I know um, a lot of people are getting irritated with Birmingham now, but you get to the point where it feels like not even just promotion. Like, it feels like winning the playoffs, that would almost be disappointing. It feels like Birmingham finishing second would be an underachievement. It feels like Birmingham finishing first with less than 90 points would be an underachievement. This is the expect... That's probably the only thing that can stop them, isn't it? The massive expectation after millions of pounds has been spent building what looks like just a guarantee of a League One champion promotion winning team. The pressure is on Birmingham because everybody thinks they should be winning this division and I am predicting them to do so. There we go. The first of the 1 to 24s is done. Get your views in the comments. Have your say the classy way. You can disagree without insulting me. I'm going big on this this season. I want to stand up for content creators. The way I get spoken to in the comments is unacceptable sometimes. And I've got to say the majority of the subscribers here on the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel are fantastic, wonderful people. But I really want people to know it is not on to sit on the internet insulting people and just being rude and not having any manners. It's got to stop. It's a problem with society. And I'm going to rant about it a little bit this season. I'll shut up now. But it's on you. Take personal accountability. If you're being a dick online, that's on you. Stop it. Cut it out now. But please, if you want to get in the comments and have your say, in, as I say, you can disagree. You, you're free speech. Ahoy, you can say what you like. There'll be a consequence for it if you're a prick about it. But I'm really interested to hear your theories and who you want where in the table and what you think of where I've positioned your team. Would you be happy with where I've positioned your team in the League One 1 to 24? predictions. What we'll do, we'll flash up over there last season's League One picks so you can pick the bones out of that and have your popcorn at the ready, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, the Championship 1-24 to predictions. Anyway, let it burn. Get in the comments on League One.